What's going on? My name is John and today we're talking about buying power tools for beginner woodworkers. And if you think I'm going to tell you to buy the most expensive option every time, not so fast my friends. Stick around and find out. All right, let's start with the first major purchase that a beginner woodworker would make, and that's the miter saw. Now, a lot of people tell you you need to subscribe to the buy once, cry once when you're purchasing any tool, but I don't think that technically applies when you're talking about miter saws, and let me tell you why. As long as you're buying something that can be tuned up enough so that the fence and the blade can be adjusted to one another so that they are a dead 90 degrees, and nearly every saw has that capability, you really don't need to break the bank on your miter saw purchase. Some of the nicer miter saws, like the one behind me, or even the ones that are a step above, are really expensive and complete overkill for a beginner. I started out borrowing my neighbor's Harbor Freight miter saw, and when I got tired of lugging that thing back and forth, I purchased this beauty from a local grocery store. True story. And everyone knows that Parkside miter saws are known for their accuracy, durability, and precision engineering. But the reality is I was able to tune this thing to 90 degrees and it helped me build a lot of great pieces of furniture over the years. You're also gonna find that as your woodworking advances, the miter saw just becomes a less and less important tool. So I'd suggest looking around for a used name brand saw like a Rigid, a DeWalt, a Hitachi. If you prefer to buy new, you could get a lesser quality saw like a Ryobi or a Harbor Freight for about the same price as the used name brand. Either one is gonna to be totally sufficient. Save your money, it's better spent elsewhere when you're building out your tool collection. For the smaller battery operated hand tools like your drills, your drivers, your circular saws, your jigsaws, pick one family of batteries and then run with it. The most important thing to look at when you're choosing a family battery is the secondary tier of tools. So spend a little bit of time researching each brand See if there's something that really specifically fits your needs maybe outside of woodworking, and that's probably gonna be your answer. But really, try not to overcomplicate this one. Debating Milwaukee versus Bosch versus DeWalt versus Makita is a little bit like debating Ford versus Chevy versus Dodge. All of those trucks get you from point A to point B. It's really just a matter of personal preference. I chose Makita because a friend of mine recommended their electric weed whacker. I tried it out and loved it, and now I'm a Makita guy for life because I love blue and weed whackers. Okay, now feels like a good time to thank the sponsor of today's video. I'm clearly kidding. I'm the sponsor of today's video. No one's sponsoring this dumb channel. But if you do want to support me and you like what you're seeing so far, please like and subscribe. If you want to take it one step further, follow the link in the description below to purchase some badass shirts like this one or even some sweet stickers. All right, shameless plugs out of the way. Back to the video. All right, friends, let's continue on our woodworking journey and talk about table saws. There's three options that you have in purchasing a table saw. The first is a smaller portable unit like this job site saw. The second option is a not portable at all cabinet style saw like this one. And then the third option, if a job site and a cabinet saw had a baby, is a contractor style saw. This is one of those purchases that I actually don't think you need to subscribe to the buy once, cry once, or break the bank on with an initial purchase. But you also don't wanna to go to the bottom of the barrel here. I'm looking at you, Harbor Freight, Ryobi, and Skill. There's two critical things that you need to be aware of when you're purchasing a table saw. The first is that the saw has the ability to make fine adjustments so that the blade and the miter slots can be aligned so that they're parallel to one another. And then the second is the table saw has a somewhat reliable fence system. The lesser quality saws that I mentioned earlier typically don't have either one of those features. So that's why I suggest not even considering them. If you're looking to buy new, a rigid Bosch, DeWalt, or Makita job site saw is going to be a great option for you. Or if you're okay buying used, rigid and Delta make a pretty good contractor style saw that you would get for about the same price as the new job site. Either option is going to give you a great starter table saw. My personal recommendation would be this DeWalt 7491RS. It's the only job site saw that can take a dado blade, which is a nice add-on feature. I used it for about seven years, have absolutely no complaints with it. You are able to fine tune it and it does have a really cool rack and pinion fence. So instead of having to do the old tap, 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 tap to adjust it, you can just turn this knob and it slowly will move. Now, if people online have convinced you that a job site saw isn't gonna be reliable for building furniture, I would encourage you to go pour a cold beverage and check out Tamar at 3x3 Custom. She builds some badass pieces using this exact saw. Sometimes it is the archer and not the arrow, my friends. 
All right, Sanders are gonna follow the same train of thought that table saws do. You don't need to break the bank with one of the higher end purchases initially, like this Merca or a Festool, but you also don't wanna go the El Cheapo route, like a Harbor Freight or a Walmart. Anything Ryobi and up is going to be more than adequate. As far as the specific type of sanders, these palm or finish sanders are utterly useless. You're also not gonna need a belt sander. A hand plane is a much better option for that and a much more versatile tool. So I recommend a random orbital sander. And the dirty little secret about sanders is that it's not so much about the tool, it's all about the sandpaper. The other buying consideration I would make when we're talking about random orbital sanders is to avoid a battery powered sander. And the reason for that is when you are sanding, you're probably gonna be hooked up to a shop back. If you're not, you should really consider doing that because it's really gonna limit the dust floating around in your shop. So if you're tethered by the shop vac, there's no reason that you shouldn't be tethered by a cord and the battery just adds unnecessary weight. And circling back on the sandpaper, I don't wanna spend a ton of time on this. Jonathan Katz Moses has a really good video breaking down sandpaper and why buying the shitty sandpaper over the long run is gonna end up costing you more and causing you a lot more headaches than buying a better quality sandpaper. His recommendation was the 3M Cubitron, which I switched to after watching his video a couple months ago. And I have nothing but good things to say about this. I'll leave a link in the video description below so you can check that one out. Okay, let's talk planers. This is gonna be short and sweet. I haven't used very many in my woodworking career. One of them has been the DeWalt 735, and then the other ones have been bigger commercial size planers, which are not at all relevant or applicable for this conversation. The DeWalt 735 is the best of the best of the lunchbox style portable planers. It will handle everything that you throw at it. This is a buy once, cry once situation. You will have this planer for the rest of your life and be very happy with it. Time for the main event. Cue the drum roll. All right, let's talk jointers. Not technically a beginner power tool, and of everything that we discussed today, this would be the last thing that you purchase. A jointer is often referred to as a luxury purchase because there are other ways to edge and face joint material, but splurging on a jointer buys you convenience and speed. The natural tendency on your first jointer purchase is to gravitate towards a smaller bench top unit like this one, not only to save yourself some space, but also money. The problem is, unless your woodworking is limited to smaller items like cutting boards, birdhouses, Danish clogs, a lot of that convenience and speed that you purchase is gonna go out the window pretty quickly. To properly joint a board, it can't be more than two times the length of the outfeed table. So for smaller bench top units like this, you start to max out around 30 to 35 inches. Also, because these units tend to be made out of aluminum instead of cast iron like their floor model counterparts, the flimsy fences and the beds tend to come out of alignment pretty easily. And again, remember why you purchased a jointer in the first place. It was convenience, speed, and accuracy. But if you're spending all of your time recalibrating the tool or setting up additional in-feed and out-feed support so you can work with longer stock, what did you really accomplish with the purchase? Your money's better spent elsewhere on the floor model versions. A floor model jointer like this one is going to be a much more reliable option because of their cast iron components. But where a floor model really shines versus the bench top is in the extended bed length. Bigger is always better for jointers. That's what she said. I recommend getting an 8 inch floor model as your starting point. And if you don't have the funds for an 8 inch right now, look around for a used 6 inch. And when the time comes to upgrade, which I promise you will, you won't take a proverbial bath money-wise because of the cost savings you had upfront buying used. And there's a good chance that you're gonna be able to sell that six inch for exactly what you paid for it initially. All right, that does it for today's video. I appreciate you making it all the way to the end. If you learned something, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks.